matched pairs t-tests are a simple statistical tool, but they are incredibly powerful because they allow us to determine whether or not there is a significant difference between two groups based on some kind of intervention or treatment. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a matched pairs t-test using the free and open source software program LibreOffice Calc. Hey everyone and welcome back. I am the part-time economist and in this video series I am doing my best to turn you into a spreadsheet superstar. In today's video we are talking about the matched pairs t-test in LibreOffice Calc. So if you're in a rush feel free to skip ahead using the timestamps but if you want the juicy drama story and what's going on here you're gonna want to watch the intro because over the past couple weeks, we have been learning LibreOffice Calc, but we're doing it by pretending that we are a divisional manager for a bunch of different supermarkets. And as you can see here from the data, we have a massive problem. More than two thirds of our stores are not profitable. And we've done a lot of different techniques for trying to analyze the data. We've learned how to sort and see who was the best manager in terms of sales, who was the worst manager in terms of sales. We've created charts, we've created graphs, but at the end of the day, we've got to do more than just know that we're not making money. We need to turn this situation around because we are the manager after all. So we've got this idea that we want to send our managers to a training program so they can get more knowledge. Now, the idea is that once they get this knowledge, they will be able to increase their productivity and make us more money. But the problem is we don't have the money to just send a thousand managers to a training program if we don't even know it works. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a test, a sample. We're going to send 20 managers to this training program and we're going to see if their sales increase, decrease, or stay the same after. And we want to have a degree of statistical certainty regarding these results. And that is where the matched pairs t-test comes into play. The matched pairs t-test allows us to compare a before and after group based on some kind of treatment. So obviously we're looking at this from a managerial perspective, but you could do the same thing in the physical sciences. If you are developing some new plant fertilizer, you can see how much a plant grew before, how much it grew after, and try to determine if your fertilizer is effective or not. Now, one key thing that we need to keep in mind here about the matched pairs t-test. We're not just selecting a random associate that went to training and a random associate that didn't go to training. As much as possible, this should be the same associate working the same shift at the same store with the same budget with the same employees, right? As much as possible, the only difference between these two before and after should be the training program that we sent them to. Now, Obviously, in the real world, that's not practical, right? Some people are going to have a good day. They're going to have a bad day. Maybe it was winter when we sent them to the training program, and now it's spring. There could be a lot of things going on. But in theory, we want to keep the similarities and differences basically the same, right? So the only difference should be this training program. So we've sent our managers to the training program. We can see manager one, it seems to work. They were doing about $100 of sales before. Now they're doing 130. But look at manager eight. They were at 114. They went down to 110. So we don't want to just average these up, right? Because what if we see that before it was 119 average sales and after was 120 average sales? We want to have a degree of statistical confidence that these results will hold up across a wider group. And for that, we're going to use the matched pairs t-test. To conduct the matched pairs t-test in LibreOffice Calc, we're simply going to select both columns of data. We're going to select data. We will select the paired t-test. Variable one is obviously the before treatment. Variable two is the after treatment. We don't have to fill any of that because we selected our data beforehand. The only thing that we have to do is select where we want the results to go. 
and whether our data is grouped by columns up and down or rows left to right. Obviously, in this example, the data is in columns. So we can go ahead and click OK, and it will spit out a bunch of numbers. Now, this is not a statistics class, so please do not worry if this feels a little bit intimidating. I'm going to show you what you need to know, and we'll cover some of the information, but we're not going to get bogged down. So the first thing that you'll notice is that we have the mean of variable one, the mean of variable two. So this tells us what was our average sales before, average sales after. And you can see here, before was 113.6, after was 122.25. So on average, the sales are higher afterwards. But again, we're looking at 20 associates. Will this hold up when we expand it to a thousand associates? For that, we want to have a degree of statistical confidence, right? I don't by any stretch want to say certainty, but what level of confidence are we looking for? And that's where something known as alpha comes into play. Now, Alpha is a statistical term, and the definition I'm going to give you is not by any stretch proper, but it helps to convey the meaning of what we're looking at. When we select an alpha, we can pick any alpha we want. Now, typically you'll hear the 0.05 alpha, but I've seen a 0.1 alpha. I've also seen a uh, 0.001 alpha, right? So there can be different levels of alpha. The bigger your alpha is, let's suppose it's a 0.1 alpha, what we're saying is that we want to essentially make a decision, right? So if the data shows a small degree of difference, we're willing to accept that and say, yes, this training program is effective, right? The smaller we make our alpha, right? Let's suppose we go from a 0.1 alpha to a 0.00001 alpha, right? And again, not that that's an alpha that's typically used, but it helps convey the point. The smaller the alpha is, we're saying, we need more evidence. We need there to be a bigger difference in these two test groups for us to accept that there is an effect for this training program, right? So the bigger your alpha, you're saying, hey, I'm willing to accept that there's a difference, even if the numbers are relatively closer. With a smaller alpha, 0.00001, you're saying, hey, I need these numbers to be really different because I need a large degree of confidence before I make the judgment that these two things are actually different, that the treatment is having an effect. So again, I've also had up the screenshot for what a true alpha is in statistics, but my way has just kind of helped me. Hopefully it helps you as well. So let's suppose we've done all this. We actually need to make a decision. So we've decided 0.05 alpha is our cutoff. What does that actually mean? Well, what you're going to see is that LibreOffice Calc will do a couple things for us. The first is the T statistic. And if you're doing statistics homework, your professor is going to be looking for this value, so it's good to know where that is. Um, but what's really important is this p-value, because the p-value says, and again, I'm paraphrasing here, this is not a 100% statistics textbook definition, but it conveys the point. The p-value says, if there's no difference, right, if there's no difference between these two groups, what is the probability that we have gotten the data that we've actually observed, right? So our null hypothesis here, we're saying, hey, we don't think there's any difference between the treatment group and the non-treatment group, right? Basically, our training program has zero effect whatsoever. That's our null hypothesis. The p-value tells us if that null hypothesis was true, so if there is no difference, what's the probability we would have gotten the results we see here? And you can see that the p-value for a one-tail test is 0.0031. So basically a 0.3% chance that we would have gotten these results. So when we take these findings to our boss and we say, hey, this training program is effective, they're going to say, well, how confident are you in these results, right? We're going to say, well, there's a pretty high degree of confidence here, right? Because if there was no difference, there's basically a 0.3% chance we would have got this data. Now, if our p-value, let's suppose instead it was 0.1, then we're saying, hey, there's like a 10% chance that this program isn't effective, right? And that all ties back in to the alpha of the test. So the alpha is our cutoff. It says 0.05. So if our p-value is bigger than 0.05, right? So we're saying, hey, if there's a 5% chance of getting these results that are true, we're going to basically 
claim that there is a difference. If we see that our p-value is 0 0.06, 0 0.07, then we're saying we need 5% confidence. You're only giving me um, that 7% confidence that this could be due to chance. I'm not going to go with that, right? So uh, again, I don't want to get too confusing here. The simple takeaway is p-value low, HO must go. So the smaller your p-value is, the higher the probability that there is some kind of a difference um, between the before and after groups and that your treatment is effective. So now that we've got that out of the way, the most important thing to look at, in my opinion, when you're doing these t-tests is the p-value because the p-value is kind of that deciding factor, right? The t-stat, the alpha, all of those things are useful because they interact with that p-value and they're used to make the decision on the p-value. But let's go back here and let's present this now to our manager because we've shown based on our study that there does appear to be a difference between the people who have had this treatment and people who have not went to this training program. So how can we make the case for the manager? Well, I like to use a chart. So again, we have our data selected. We're going to come up here to the chart icon and we might not really know the best type of chart for conveying this information. One thing that I really like here is that LibreOffice will show us a preview. So we can see here, if we go to a bar chart, a pie chart, it actually shows us what the chart's gonna look like before we finalize everything. One thing that I really like, and I think would be great for something where you're showing before and after, is this column and line chart. So again, we've already had the video on charts. You know how to create the chart. I'm just gonna finish through everything here. And essentially what this does is it shows us what was the person's sales before in the blue and then what was their sales after right so in virtually all of these we can see that that orange line is higher there's a couple instances where someone's performance decreased after the training uh, but again this is a quick easy graphic for showing that there does appear to be a difference and we can support that not confirm it right because we're dealing with statistics but we can support this analysis that the training is useful by showing that p-value by conducting the matched pairs t-test so again kind of an entry-level video but i hope you're really starting to see the power that LibreOffice can give us not just for basic spreadsheet stuff but conducting some of those statistical analysis as well as always i sincerely appreciate you watching the video i hope you found it useful and i will see you next time Thank you.